I feel a powerful move of the Holy Ghost in here. And I believe that we have tapped into something if we'll just yield ourselves to it. There's still some people in this place that God is ready to move in your life. Come on. And it's, you sit there and you wonder, well, I wonder if I'd ever act like that. Yeah, you would. You ever got what I got? Let me tell you something. When I was out in the world, I didn't just, I didn't just get drunk or high on Sundays or Wednesdays. I was a drunkard Sunday through Sunday, okay? Nothing's changed since I got the Holy Ghost. Except now I'm drunk on Jesus. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm not going to give the devil more than I give Jesus Christ. Every time I walk into these doors, I'm going to be baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost once again. I've had people say, well, I don't know how to stay delivered. I'll tell you how to stay delivered. You get the Holy Ghost every time you walk through those doors. Every time you walk through those doors, you don't leave like you came in. You walk out full and on fire of the Holy Ghost. This is that. This is that. It's an honor to be here. Love Brother Gaddy and Sister Gaddy. They've been a friend to our families for a long time. And I always love coming to this church. This is a great church. Great people. If you'd stand one more time. I'm not real long-winded. Y'all know that, so you might as well say hallelujah. I know y'all want to get to the buffet. Matthew 14 and 14. We got water. If you have your Bibles, I hear all them pages turning. Batteries never went out on my Bible. Just saying, I mean, you ought to bring your Bible to church. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them. And he healed their sick. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a desert place and the time is now past. Send the multitude away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. Now in the Greek and Hebrews, that means victuals, all right? Just letting y'all know. I wondered what victuals was too. <laughs> but Jesus said unto them, they need not depart. Give ye them to eat. And they say unto him, we have here but five loaves and two fishes. He said, bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes. And looking up to heaven, he blessed and break and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled, and they took up other fragments that remained. Everybody say, 12 baskets full. And they that had eaten were about 5,000 men beside women and children. And I want to preach for a few minutes on the God that fills the empty. And I want you to lift your hands. And I want you to speak the name of Jesus out. Come on. And say, Lord, finish what you've started in this place. In the name of Jesus, I speak it over this place. Lord, let the gifts of your spirit of the spirit begin to operate in this place. Lord, move upon me like I've never been moved upon before, God. I need your anointing now more than ever before. By the power and the authority of your name, we loose you in this place. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You may be seated. Good to see Brother Thomas. That makes you a little nervous, doesn't it? Jesus has just been told of John the Baptist being beheaded by Herod. And you know, he was probably feeling sad, so he departed by a ship to a desert place. 
Now when the people of the region heard that he was there, they began to follow him. And Jesus saw this great multitude of people and he seen their needs and he was moved with compassion and he began healing the sick among them. You see, all day long he ministered until it was evening. You see, because it doesn't matter what your predicament is. Come on. It doesn't matter how sick you are. It doesn't matter how in need you are. We serve a God that no matter what will always take the time to heal us. Come on. He'll always take the time to meet our needs. His disciples came to him and they must have had a chubby evangelist. They said, hey, it's past supper time. <laughs> we'll always let you know when it's supper time. You know what he said? They said, they said, send them away, Lord, so we, they can find some food. I like what Jesus said. They don't have to leave. Won't you give them some food? His disciples said, all we have is five loaves of bread and two fishes. You know what Jesus said? Bring it to me. I want you to know. I'm just going to tell you something. I don't know what you walked in that door with. I don't care how big your problem was. I don't care how small your problem is. My God is just waiting on you to bring it to him. Because let me tell you something. You can take it to Jesus and you can place it in his hands. You know what he'll do? He'll make a miracle out of it. Because I want you to know my God still heals cancer. My God still sets the drug addict free. My God knows how to take care of the alcoholic. He's just waiting on his people to step into a realm of faith and say, God, use me. Jesus commanded them to sit down on the grass. Then he took the five loaves and the fishes and blessed them. And then he broke them and gave them to the disciples and they gave them to the multitude. And we just read, it says, they ate and they were all filled and they took up of the fragments that remain 12 baskets full. Now, I'm not gonna act like I'm a scholar the only thing that stood between me and college was high school. <laughs> True. They had me play Abraham Lincoln in the third grade. I was the only boy who could grow a beard. <laughs> so I don't act like I'm real smart, okay? I mean, I'm the guy that every suit he owns just about has pinstripes because somebody said it makes you look skinnier, right? And I know there's some deep theological reason for the 12 baskets. I'm sure I can get it from Brother Gaddy later. But I believe the reason there was 12 baskets filled is because that's all the baskets that were there needed to be filled. I believe if there'd have been 20 baskets that needed to be filled, I believe Jesus would have filled 20 baskets. I believe if there was 100 baskets there, Jesus would have filled 100 baskets. Because you don't walk into the presence of my Jesus and leave empty. Come on, he's just waiting on somebody in this place to take all their cares, all their worries, all your fears, all your pain and all your hurt and just throw it to the side and begin to empty yourself so he can begin to fill you to overflowing. Because I'm telling you, I serve a God. I don't care what kind of problem you walked in here with. If you'll just leave it down and lay it down, he'll reach down and he'll fill you to overflowing because he's the God that fills the empty. He doesn't want any of his children to be sick. He doesn't want any of his children to be burdened. He's just waiting on us to leave it all aside. Sometimes he can't fill us because we're so full of everything else. Come on. Sometimes, hey, I'm guilty of it. It's hard being this good looking. He thinks I'm good looking. You see, Jesus was in the area of Galilee and he was ministering to mostly Jewish people. And they would bring a certain basket with them when they were going somewhere. It was just big enough to hold a small lunch and maybe a few other little things. Now, the only Greek I know, he runs a restaurant in Little Rock. That's about it. <laughs> but I, I looked up this word, 
in the Greek for basket, and it, 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 it's kofinos. Guess what it means? Small basket. She's paying attention. Now, most likely it had a strap on it, had him a man purse. Now, I listen to Tim Gaddy and Raymond Woodward. And, man, they're great preachers. And they can get a Greek word, and they can preach for an hour on that Greek word. I look up my first Greek word, Brother Thomas, and it means small basket. Now, I don't know how much time had lapsed, but once again, you go to the next chapter. They were in the area of the Sea of Galilee, and Jesus went to a mountain and sat down, and people heard he was in the area, and a great multitude came to him, bringing with them the lame, the blind, the mute, and the maimed, putting them at Jesus' feet. Matthew 15, and Jesus departed from thence and came nigh unto the Sea of Galilee and went up into a mountain and sat down there. And great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them, insomuch that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb to speak, the maimed to be whole, the lame to walk, and the blind to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. Then Jesus called his disciples unto him and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they continue with me now three days and have nothing to eat. I will not send them away fasting lest they faint in the way. And his disciples say unto him, Whence should we have so much bread in the wilderness as to fill so great a multitude? Short memories, don't they? And Jesus saith unto them, How many loaves have ye? And they said, Seven and a few little fishes. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves and the fishes and gave thanks and brake them and gave to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up of the broken meat that was left. Everybody say seven baskets full. You see, Jesus was ministering for three days. Now, I don't mind people looking at their watch. When I'm preaching, it's when they start shaking it. If we're not out in about 20 or 30 minutes, everybody's looking around going, man, I'm about to, I'm about to starve to death. Jesus went on for three days. And he didn't want to send them away fasting. He was afraid they would faint. And so he asked them, is there any food around? And they said, there's only seven loaves and a few fishes. See, once again, he broke the bread and he prayed and he fed thousands of people and when they took up the fragments that were left, there were seven baskets full. Now, the Greek word there is peri, which means a woven hamper that you could put a person inside of it. It's the same word that was used when they let Saul over the, wall, the walls of Damascus. I believe that there was people that heard that Jesus had filled up the 12 baskets and he heard how they filled up all those little baskets. And you know what they did? They went and found the biggest thing that they could find because they knew when you walked into the presence of Jesus Christ, come on, you're going to leave filled up. I got news for you, honey. When I walked in those doors today, I brought in the biggest thing that I could find because I'm ready for the God that fills the empty to fill me to overflowing. You can come in here with your little old problems, but I've emptied everything out that I have because I need a blessing from God. I need him to reach down and touch me. I need him to reach down and touch my body. I need a blessing. Can you imagine? Everybody looked at him like they fell out of a basement window as they were dragging this big old hamper around following Jesus. Three days. Can you imagine? Dude runs into the laundry room, starts chucking stuff out. His wife looks at him and says, Where, what are you doing? Get the hush puppies, baby. We're about to have a fish fry. <laughs> Come on. You know, we sing a lot of different songs in Pentecost. and I shouldn't make fun of this one, but I'm going to. 
about open up the skies, fall down like rain. We don't want blessings. We want you. You can tell an evangelist didn't write that song. Because I want him and I want the blessings that come with it. Come on, my God loves to bless us. That's the reason I give in church. Come on, because he, he said, try me, try me. I'm gonna tell you something. That's the reason why I live holy in a separated life. That's the reason why I pay my tithes because I serve a God that fills the empty. He's just waiting on me to cast everything away. It's just days after he was crucified. All of Jesus' followers are in mourning. They're distraught. Their faith is low. They must have had some Arkansas blood in them because Peter says, I'm going fishing. And all the other, some of the other disciples said, all right, we'll go with you. And they fished all night long and caught. They didn't catch anything, right? You all remember I guess you could say their nets were empty, couldn't you? But you see, the God that fills the empty, he's just about to show up. Let me tell you something. You may have been toiling, and it seems like it don't matter which way you turn. It doesn't seem like no matter how hard you try, it seems like you always come up empty because God has just been waiting on you to walk in here and say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I'm going to cast everything aside because when the God that fills the empty shows up, the things which are empty are going to be filled. John 21 and 3. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go fishing. They say unto him, we also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus saith unto them, children, have ye any meat? They answered him, no. And he said unto them, cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. You see, when Jesus arrives, the things which were once empty will now be filled to overflowing. When they realized it was Jesus, Peter jumped out of the boat, and he began to swim to the shore. And I like this. Jesus already had a fire of coals going with fish and some bread. Now that's what I'm talking about. John 21 and 10, Jesus saith unto them, bring the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up, drew the net to the land full of great fishes, 153, for all there were so many, yet not the net was broken. You see, he told them, come on, bring me the fish you caught. Because the last time he done this, they weren't ready for it. Because the net broke. But this time the net held and there was 153 fish. So I began to wonder why 153? I read one commentary that said that there was 153 known languages at that time. I read another one that said there was 153 species of fish in the Sea of Galilee. So when Jesus spoke, they started coming from all over that body of water. They started coming from the deep. They started coming from the middle. They started coming from the shallow. You know what he was doing? He was letting them know it doesn't matter who you are or where you come from. I'm the God that fills the empty. It's not just for a certain race. It's not just for a certain color. It's not just for a certain social status. If you need him, all you have to do is empty yourselves of the cares of this world and he'll fill you to overflowing. Come on, you may have walked in this place today and you feel like you're running on empty. Well, that's good. I got good news for you because the God that fills the empty is in this place. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord and one place. And suddenly, and suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it set upon each of them and some of them were filled with the Holy Ghost. No, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. How 
did they know they got the Holy Ghost? They began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. On the day of Pentecost, they were waiting on the Lord. They had just seen him leave. They were tearing. They were feeling empty. They had emptied themselves. And now they were waiting on him. And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven. And I feel that mighty rushing wind in this place right now. You know what? It filled all the house where they were sitting but it didn't stop at the house, honey. Jesus not only filled up the house, but he filled everybody in that house with the Holy Ghost. And they all began to speak in other tongues. Well, they began to have church around there, about like we was having, just a little bit souped up maybe. People started pouring around, thinking they were drunk. So Peter stands up and begins to preach. And the word says they were pricked in their hearts and said, what must we do? Let me tell you what he said. He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you. Not just maybe you need to be baptized because he that believeth and is baptized, the same shall be saved. Come on, come on. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the remission of your sins. When you are baptized in this water, every sin you ever committed is washed away. And then ye shall. Not that you might receive the Holy Ghost, but you shall receive the Holy Ghost. Let's all sing. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost in this place. It's time to stop. I want you to lift your hands and I want you to begin to speak life into this place right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I speak it with authority right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus. Now here's what I want us to do. If you've never spoken in tongues and you want the baptism of the Holy Ghost, this is your time right now. And number two, you know who you are. You don't need me to tell you. I couldn't tell you anyway. I'm not one of them guys that tell you what color your wallet is and all that. If it's been a while, if, if you, there's ever been a time in your life that you was closer to God than you are right now, then you've backslidden that much. I'm just going to tell you honestly. And it's been a while since you lifted your hands and felt the power of the Holy Ghost come upon you. And you begin to speak in another language. If you're in this place and you're sick and need of healing in your body, I want you to start coming forward. Come on. Come on. If you're sitting beside somebody and you know they need the Holy Ghost, take them by the hand. Come on. Begin to move. Let's go. Come on. Begin to move towards the front. I need the church. Come on. Let's all move towards the front. Let's go. Come on. Grab somebody by the hand. Let's go. Come on. Begin to move out of your seat. Come on, saints. Grab somebody. Come on. That's it. Come on, young people. Come on, don't pass it up. You've never spoken in tongues. You've never been baptized in Jesus' name. Come on, begin to move out. That's it. Come on, move on forward, y'all, so people can come on in. Come on. Come on, I feel him in this place. Come on, I, I'm going to tell you, I'll be honest with you, I need a touch in my body. And I believe God's going to heal me in this place right now, in Jesus' name. Come on, you've never spoken in tongues. Come on. That's it. Come on, you feel it down here? You feel it, don't you? Come on, that's it. You're going to get the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Come on, that's it. I was in prayer not too long ago. And I, God told me, 
When I have my hands lifted, you know what that is? I've always been told, well, that's surrender. But the Lord spoke to me and said, I can make anybody surrender. When you lift your hands to me, it's submission. Come on. I want you to lift your hands. Begin to submit to him right now. Come on. There you go. Now, I want you to begin to repent. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Come on. Lord, I need you. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Come on, lift your hands. Begin to repent. God, I need your blood to cover me all across this place. Come on, we're going to spend a few moments in repentance. I need you, Jesus. I need you. I need your blood upon my life. Come on, that's it. God, I've been thinking things I shouldn't have thought. Come on, young man, open up to him. Lord, I've been watching things I shouldn't have been watching. Lord, I've been saying things I probably shouldn't have been saying. Will you forgive me of my sins? Come on, that's it. Will you forgive me of my sins? I need you, Jesus. Come on, just spend a moment. Let that blood begin to roll over you. Let that blood begin to cover you. Come on, let that blood begin to just cover every part of your body. I need you, Jesus. Come on, that's it. Now we're starting to press through for a moment. Forgive me, Jesus. Forgive me, Jesus. Lord, I need you. Forgive me, Jesus. Yes, hallelujah. Come on, one more moment. Just begin to repent. Come on, I feel his presence in this place. Now that we've repented, his word says he's forgiven us. If you haven't been baptized, you need to not leave this place without being baptized in Jesus' name. Now one more time, I want you to lift your hands to him. Come on. Let the power of the Holy Ghost begin to fall in this place. If you're standing by somebody that hasn't spoken in tongues, I want you to lay your hands upon their head right now and tell them, receive you the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Come on. Receive you the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. If you know of somebody that's sick or in need of a healing in their body, reach over and place your hands upon their head and say, receive your healing in the name of Jesus. Come on, these signs will follow them that believe. These signs will follow them that believe. Come on, that's it. Come on, saints. Come on, I need my altar workers down here now. Come on, in the name of Jesus. Lord, baptize us with the Holy Ghost and with fire in this place.